Okay, so now that we have a unit test framework in place, um, we, we might want to go back and take a look at this, uh, this data download function and take a look at why it's running so slowly. If you remember that just downloading this data and running this function um, takes a long time. And, and the, it turns out when, what we saw earlier is that this parse dates functionality right here is not uh, not doing very well. It's it's pretty slow, and the reason that is is that there's 38,000 strings in here, and the parse dates is is looking at each each string individually, inferring its format and trying to parse it. So pandas has some tools that lets us uh, be a little smarter about that. So I'm going to copy this code and start to look at how we can we can do that a little bit um, a little bit more quickly. So um, Let's, let's first look what happens if we don't put this parse states in here. If we run that, the, um, oh, i got to import pandas. Let's get that up there. If we, if we run that, it, it um, reads the file basically um, instantly, which is nice. Um, but the problem is the data.index uh, is just a type of, op it's an object. So each of the values is a string rather than a date. Um, one thing we can do is if we do um, if we do pd dot dot two date time of that index, um, you can see that that takes a long time because this is doing the same thing as parse dates. It's basically looking at each individual um, each individual string and asking um, asking it to infer the format. But we can speed things up if we ask it to um, if we tell it that there's a specific format that we want this. So if you look at, um, for working with dates, you can look at this Python strf time format, and there's some good guides online that show you these little codes that tell you what the, um, what the various parts of the date are and how they're formatted. So we can, um, by looking at that, we can do something like um, format equals percent %m, percent %d, percent Y, so that's the first part, month, day, year, and we want it to do P percent hour, percent minute, percent second, and then for this AM or PM, it's actually a percent lowercase p. And you, you can find all these codes on this, this table right here. Now if we do that, then this happens, this happens almost instantaneously if we get things right. What did I do wrong? Um, 10, 3, 2012, I put spaces between minutes, um, hour, minute, and second. They need to be uh, colons between hour, minute, and second. And so if we do that, it'll happen almost instantaneously. It can, it can parse all those uh, 38,000 columns. Um, so that's nice. That'll let us go really fast. But uh, we want to be a little bit careful here because um, there might be... Uh, there might be, like, if the data format changes ever, then this thing might fail. So I'm going to do a, wrap this in a try and accept statement. Um, so if we get if we get that type error again, then we'll just do um, we'll just do this without the format, and uh, it, it'll be a little slower, but it'll, at least it'll return the same result, same result. And we want to store that somewhere, so let's call that data.index equals this, and data.index equals that. So this is the key right here to refactoring our code and making it faster. Let's put it back in here and um, we're going to replace this column right here with these right here. Um, and I'm going to make sure all the, all the tabs are correct and then get rid of that. So now we, we read the CSV without parsing the dates. We get the thing in the right format and if it doesn't work, we, we do it in that format. So um, now we have this in here and we can actually run our unit tests now to make sure um, things are working. We run make tests, it should collect the items and look look at that, it happens in about one second. So our, our um, data download is returning the correct thing, it's happening faster and um, we've validated that we're still getting out basically the same results even though we've changed the algorithm and gotten a, a more efficient um, implementation. And this is the key for unit testing because as you're working on research projects, sometimes you run into bottlenecks that um, are okay in your first pass but if, as you want to uh, uh, expand and start doing more things, the, um, the speed of things becomes a problem.
problem. If you've written a unit test, you can do that kind of refactoring and you can make sure that the output is what you expect it to be um, even after you've done that refactoring. So of course the way we're going to um, finish this is to, um, to add the things. We can, let's look at git diff to see what changed here. If we just, all we did is we subtracted that line and we added these lines right here. Um, so I'm going to um, git add uh, Jupyter workflow slash tests, test data. I'm going to, oops, that's not test data. I did, I changed Jupyter workflow slash data. That's why I always do git status before doing anything. And um, commit minus m refactor data download and push origin master. And once you have that, then that's on GitHub. So you have a, um, a refactored function. Everything should still work, but it's just doing it much faster. So that's quite nice. And that's, that's the power of unit testing is you don't, have to, you don't have to worry that you've broken the pieces of your code when you do that kind of refactor.